<laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to... Uh, well, I'm not going to welcome you to Fully Charged yet, to the Fully Charged <laughs> live show, because I'm going to do that in a minute. But I'm welcoming you to this Aptera Unveil. <laughs> this is very, very exciting. I just want to know how many people have seen this car before now. Uh, no one. There you go. This is super exclusive. No one has seen, no human being has set eyes on this car before now. So, Sandy Munro, welcome, Sandy. Thank you. I'm doing well. This is going to be a very exciting, very exciting day. And uh, Sandy's here to help me unveil it. And because I'm old, uh, Jack is also going to help me. Jack, how are you doing? doing very good, thanks. I can't wait to see this thing. Because you've driven it, and they were cursing you because you're just too tall. But this, your fitting, has been some redesign. I've heard about it. It's bigger. It's bigger. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's not pad it out. Let's unveil this amazing machine. Sandy wants a comment. Uncle Sandy. Good comment. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So here's your sound bite. Uh, Monroe and Associates has been working on this vehicle with Chris and the Apira team for quite a while. And we're here to help you turn silver into gold. How about that? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Um, and thank you, Robert. It's amazing to be here. Amazing to show everyone the progress we've made over the last three and a half years. It's an exercise in bleeding edge engineering to make this vehicle 100 watt, 100 watt hour per mile green. You know, you, you park it in your driveway, it gives you 40 miles a day of free solar charging. So for the average driver, you would never have to plug the Aptera in. It's just free mobility. So um, with that, I, I thank you for helping us unveil this amazing vehicle. And um, I know you have a couple minutes, so maybe you want to say more things before you head off to your next thing, but I know Sandy has some things to say. I'll take over and answer questions and stuff after you guys are done. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to say too much because we don't have any much time. But I want to tell you one thing for sure. Um, I've been in the auto industry for a long, long time. A long time. And in the auto industry, there are always iconic vehicles. Vehicles that define that era. A Model T, you don't have to hear the word Ford. Beetle, you don't have to hear the word VW. Uh, Mini, you don't have to hear BMW i3, right? It, or sorry, BMW, uh, what's the right word? Mini. It just, you just know that it's a Mini. Well, from now on, this is the icon for the EV age. This is it, at Terra. Woo! Woo! So that's, that's uh, one of the weird advantages of, of being involved in this world, very much from the outside, not like Sandy. Uh, I'm very much an observer from the outside, but I first saw this car about 10 years ago and I just thought, this is genius piece of engineering. This is an amazing way of, uh, of approaching it. And it's been through a rocky history, <laughs> yeah. I think it's fair to say. And it's so incredibly rewarding to see this car now coming to fruition. This is the, the last sort of pre-production version, is that, is that right? Yes, this is, uh, this is called the Gamma, and we have four stages to our production path. Um, Alpha, which a lot of you people have seen, we have uh, three different vehicles. Uh, one was black, called Noir, one was silver, called Luna, and one was light, called Soul. Then we moved into our beta. <laughs> then we moved into our beta effort, and that was really to test our suspension and production components. And now this is Gamma, which um, looks very production-like, uh, but we still have work to do with our supply chain and getting our uh, vendors in order, and that's really what the next stage is. Uh, Delta will be closer to the end of this year, and that's really a fully production conscientious vehicle, and we're ready to uh, barnstorm production and deliver to our over 30,000 pre-orders now. Woo! Woo! Oh, he's being modest. There's, there's one other thing. Um, there's another founding, funding round, and uh, quite frankly, uh, as anybody that's watched my show knows that I've invested and I already mentioned that we worked on the design and the manufacturing capability of this car. But, but if you want to get in on the next Tesla Roddy, or not, that's a Tesla Millionaire yeah. Club or whatever, <laughs> I think that this is it. And I know it is because I've already done it. So if you have to talk about that. 
Yeah, our, our latest investment round is open now. Um, we hope that uh, many of you can support our efforts to bring solar mobility to the masses. And um, it's exciting that 10 years ago, these kind of tools weren't available. You couldn't invest in early Google. You couldn't invest in early Tesla. It just wasn't a thing. You had to be a millionaire or a billionaire or part of a large fund. Now, for just $1,000, you can invest in Aptera and go along the journey with us to delivering our first 30,000 vehicles and beyond. And it'll be very exciting. I think we have a very um, you know, interesting path to making the world a more efficient place. So we hope a lot of you can join us. But just go to Aptera website, click on Invest, and that's how you do it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope over the next get two days you come and have a look at the Aptera in between, in between the amazing talks we're giving, and one of those is starting very, very shortly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the Aptera and maybe answer some questions. We'll spend another uh, five minutes, if that's okay. But uh, really, the Aptera, um, you know, over the last three years has been a labor of love for so many of our engineers and suppliers and supporters around the world. Uh, we have over 750 ambassadors around the world now, and a lot of them are in town. So thank you, Aptera ambassadors, for, for coming out and sharing the love. <laughs> Round of applause for all the Aptera ambassadors. Oh, there seems to be a lot of them here. Um, but our engineers have worked tirelessly to put every piece of advanced engineering into this vehicle. Uh, making the vehicle more aerodynamic in the Gamma version, even though we made the interior compartment 1% bigger. Uh, we actually did a lot of things ergonomically to make you a little more comfortable in the Aptera. We, we, moved, your, we moved the seat down 25 millimeters. We moved the seat to the center 20 millimeters. We raised the, uh, the corner. Um, uh, above your head as you enter the door, 55 millimeters. Um, just a much more uh, comfortable interior space. Uh, we also, um, if you've been following us for a long time, made many aerodynamic changes to the Aptera. The, the wheel pants are drastically redesigned for this version of the vehicle. Uh, and that's so air that gets compressed between the body and the wheel pants can flow through more seamlessly. Uh, the nose is actually more pointy and lower uh, in the gamma compared to previous vehicles. And the total vehicle is longer by four inches. So there's more storage uh, in the rear, uh, which is nice. Um, I can. I was going to go back and show you the uh, the rear opening, but we have to carry this around. But the, uh, um, the the future is knocking. And the uh, <laughs> uh, we think that a lot of people will find the Aptera to be a lot more useful than really you can decipher from pictures on the internet. Um, a lot of people will see this vehicle on the internet and in videos, and they think it's small. Uh, but the Aptera is not small. <laughs> it's, uh, it's as wide as a Tesla Model S, and it's as long as a Prius. Um, and as you can see in the rear, um, when you fold the seats forward, you have seven feet from the back of the seats to the tail of the storage. So you can fit a couple seven-foot surfboards in the back. You can fit a couple mountain bikes. Uh, you can certainly pack for a long uh, camping journey. And we even have a tent option that goes over the rear so you can sleep two people and a dog comfortably in the back. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting adventure vehicle. And we get this question a lot, you know, what, how is Aptera going to change the world? And, and one way um, is zero fuel cost transportation, uh, which we think is very exciting. <laughs> um, but a vehicle that creates its own fuel is something tremendously unique. Um, you know, when you go on a camping adventure and you drive 300 miles away and you set up for camp, um, you can actually create more fuel over a week and leave with more charge in your Aptera than when you first got there. So it just opens up a world of possibilities. You know, if you take another uh, gasoline powered vehicle or even electric vehicle out on a camping adventure, you, you may have to worry about how you're gonna get back, but not with the Aptera. Um, it's, uh, it's a very interesting, uh, vehicle like that. Uh, when the zombies attack, uh, this is the vehicle you want. Because this is <laughs> when the gas stations are down and the plugs aren't working, you want your vehicle to be solar powered. Um, Sandy, did you want to uh, make any further comments before we take questions? It's quite all right if you don't, but um, uh, maybe just on the uh, engineering of the vehicle and how, uh, how we're pacing ourselves through production, and then, uh, then I can take uh, five or six questions and we can, we can move on. Okay, so for those folks who um, are in the auto industry, uh, you know most of the time that uh, that if if, pe if people um, if people have a problem uh, in the auto industry, 
regardless of whether that's in Japan or in uh, Europe or United States and Canada, um, we usually get a call. But with Aptera, uh, <coughs> Chris and Steve phoned me up and invited me for a pizza, and, um, and that's how I got involved uh, really early on, shortly after the uh, financial stuff. And I'm telling you what, this is going to be a car that's going to be so robust, so aerodynamically perfect, and it's going to be made like a stone. In other words, it's going to have, if you can think of, um, you can think of uh, uh, Elon Musk making those big castings at either end out of aluminum, think about this car as five pieces. That's it. Okay? One for the body, one for the doors, one for the two hatches, and that's it. It's going to be rock solid. It'll never rust. You're going to have a car that's going to last for eons. You'll give it to your grandchildren. Is that good enough? <laughs> it's great, Sandy. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I would say he brings up a good point that we really want to build the Aptera as a generational vehicle. We don't want this vehicle to be a keep it five years and then throw it away type of vehicle. Um, all of the solar panels on the vehicle are detachable and upgradable. So in the future, when solar cells are 30% efficient versus 24% efficient, you can upgrade. When, uh, when your infotainment system gets stale and we're on to 6G or 10G or whatever the freaking next uh, <laughs> wireless protocol is, you can upgrade your infotainment center. Uh, you can upgrade your battery pack. Uh, we want this vehicle to be passed down to your grandchildren. And the great thing about a composite vehicle is it will never rust away. So uh, we hope to keep these on the road for as long as possible. On the service side, we're a right to repair company. So if you have a problem with the Aptera, we will tell you how you can fix it and ship you the part to fix it within 24 hours. Um, thank you. I think a lot of, uh, of other companies have been very resistant to this kind of thinking, but the service needs of a vehicle like this being so modular and having you know half a million to a million mile brake life and uh, no pump lubricants, uh, the only thing that's wearable in the motors is the axle bearing. And you know, when's the last time you've heard of a modern car losing an axle bearing? It just doesn't happen. They're million mile uh, bearings now. So you know, this vehicle should be very hands off in terms of service. So um, you know, in the occasional chance that it may need service for warranty, we don't want to restrict you on how you accomplish that. So we hope to be able to ship the Aptera around the world with that kind of service mentality, and we hope to make a lot of people happy with the Aptera and make the world a cleaner greener place. Um, maybe Sarah, Sarah and her miraculous marketing team have put all of this together and um, they brought all of these ambassadors into town. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Hand for our marketing team. They've done an amazing job putting this show together. Uh, we have a lot of Terra engineers here. Uh, they're the ones that have put their heart and soul into the design of this vehicle, uh, staying late, uh, making it happen, working on the weekend. So if you see anybody in a white Aptera shirt, feel free to ask them questions about why is this vehicle so amazing uh, and shake their hand and thank them because they're working so, so hard uh, to bring solar mobility to life. Uh, but five or six questions, um, happy to answer them. Raise your hand and I'll try to repeat your question for everybody. Yes, sir. Uh, air vents. Uh, in the Gamma, we have a, a, a very interesting new air vent uh, that actually exists around the center screen. So instead of having air vents in the dash, you have air vents at different angles, top, bottom, and side, um, and that allows you to very easily direct air uh, to the driver and passenger around the vehicle and makes for very nice air recirculation around the cabin, which makes our HVAC system even more efficient. Uh, it's a very cool uh, device and we've got a patent out on it, and I think uh, it'll, it'll, it'll please a lot of people. Uh, next question. Uh, there, he asked if there's solar on the dash. Yes, there is solar on the dash. Um, the, the four panels of solar you can get, um, two come standard. Uh, the dash and the roof come with every Aptera vehicle. Uh, you can option up to get the hood and the rear hatch. Um, the total solar package on a warm summer day in Southern California will get you about 40 miles of free solar charging a day. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, next question. 
Uh, the tax credits vary by state, uh, but if you know any politicians, please lobby for us to get more tax incentives. Uh, the latest federal tax incentive doesn't apply to any electric vehicle in this building, so it's uh, rather sad that we don't have politicians that are really fighting for things like solar mobility. Uh, he asked, is this built off of production tooling? So the next design iteration is called our Delta design iteration that really is a pre-production vehicle. That vehicle will be built with production intent parts, but not necessarily off of production intent tools. It takes time and money to develop those tools. They're very, very expensive. Uh, so a lot of what you see here won't change. Visually, the Delta will be very, very similar to this vehicle. So from 200 yards away, you may not notice. But most of these parts were not built off of production tools. They were, they were built off of prototyping tools. Uh, the charging port. Oh, my, the charging port. Oh, baby, let's see. Charging port. Oh, that's a beautiful charge port right there. Uh, we feel that this charge port is the uh, is the most elegant in the game. Um, so we uh, it works with our packaging. It works for DC and AC. It does. It makes all of our charging dreams come true. <laughs> uh, the ball next to the license plate is actually um, it doesn't have the rear part yet, but this will be our reverse indicator. It's also your charge port light and it lights up your license plate all with a single LED, which is, uh, which is very cool. Uh, my live stream channel wants to know, can it tow anything? Uh, she asked, can it tow anything? Uh, we do have a tow option available, um, but it's, uh, it's not represented on this vehicle, and it is low on our engineering uh, <laughs> task list. So, uh, so we've made provisions for it, but uh, I don't know if we're even going to show that off in the Delta. It will probably be once we start production. Uh, the solar panels on the back, in previous versions, there was some chevron uh, on the back. Uh, we actually moved those chevrons to the solar rear hatch. We were actually able to put even more solar panels uh, on the rear hatch, which actually allows it to produce uh, even more energy. I don't want to forget these people over here, but any, uh, any questions over here? Yes, sir. Windshield wipers. If you look uh, under the cowl here, you will see our beautiful we don't know if the metal arm is what we're going into production with. We think that uh, we'll probably uh, put into production a carbon fiber uh, arm, but that's uh, still under development. It takes a lot of you know trial and error kind of to, to get the spring rates right and stuff. Yes, sir. Is the logo RGB? In this version, the logo is RGB. We don't know that the production version will be RGB. Uh, we think that we'll be able to kind of give you indications on uh, how it's charging and when it's full and stuff uh, through the logos, uh, but we haven't really, that's another thing that's low on our engineering <laughs> task list. Uh, he asked, what's the mileage estimate with this amount of solar? So with just the dash and the roof, you get 15 to 17 miles of solar charging a day. So it's uh, still very useful for a lot of people, and if you only take a couple trips a week, uh, maybe you only want the dash and the roof. Uh, but most of our customers, 75% of uh, Aptera pre-orders are for the whole solar package. And we think that's because people just want the flexibility of more charge. And hopefully we have some uh, B to G technologies where you can take the solar power from your Aptera and put it back to your house, which is a very, very cool, uh, cool thing. Uh, he asked, what kind of crash testing will we be doing with this vehicle? Um, we had a previous version of the Aptera that went through all the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards tests. Uh, frontal impact, side impact, uh, sorry, frontal impact, offset frontal impact, side impact, <laughs> roof car strength. Um, we have designed a, a whole new vehicle architecture and that will have to be retested. Uh, but we will share with the public, I think uh, hopefully all of you Aptera fans agree, uh, we overshare. Um, so anything we do, we want to share with our community to bring you along the journey, and the crash testing will be no different. When we start to crash test this vehicle, you'll see the results, we'll put out video, we'll tell you the stats, um, and so on. Uh, expect that in early next year. Last question, last two questions, yes sir. Okay, we'll turn the speaker your way. Yes sir. The grant from California. Yes, we uh, were uh, just awarded a grant from the CEC. Um, it's still quite a process to, um, you know, file 
uh, with the state, and uh, they will be coming uh, with more information on the specifics of that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's terribly humbling to have uh, very sophisticated organizations uh, come and support Aptera, and it's very exciting to see how that will play into our production path. Yes, sir. Are you going to be able to upgrade the mileage after your purchase? Are you going to be able to upgrade the mileage after you purchase? Um, after you purchase, you can easily upgrade the uh, solar panels. Um, and we plan on having an upgradable kit where you can um, have a travel solar panel with you and you can roll it out the back and add another kilowatt of solar charging. So if you want to do that for, say, your off-grid cabin or if you want to take this adventuring and you want more energy because you want to use your laptop all night or an electric cook, cook stove, uh, then that's an option. Uh, but as far as the battery pack, we hope and most people stick with their initial purchase battery pack. Uh, but you can upgrade the battery pack over time if you want. Last question, last question, make it a good one. Is it a good one? I bet, all right. Uh, he asked a question about a possible third seat. Um, I, it's not the most exciting question, but yes, we do plan on having a third seat option uh, in the base Aptera. Um, and our future is, we think that aerodynamics, lightweight, efficient powertrain, solar powered vehicle can be adopted to almost any platform and we want to make the world a more efficient place and we think we can do that by, by having many different variants of the, uh, of the Aptera. Um, I thank everyone for their support, um, all the Aptera ambassadors and fans that are here, it's just amazing um, that you guys came so early and were at the doors to bust through and see um, our new Gamma vehicle. But uh, feel free to ask anybody in a white shirt questions while we're here. And we're just so humbled to have so much support to you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks to my team and everyone at Aptera for helping make this possible. And I hope you guys really enjoy the Fully Charged show. There's lots of amazing things happening in the world of EV. Uh, we support them all. We want us all to be successful so the world is a better place for our children and grandchildren. Thank you so much. Go check it out.